you know, we both went through OC changes um, from the player side. From the coach's perspective, just want to know, when you come into a situation like this, spring ball, what are the things you're really trying to get accomplished when you first get here? Well, there's a couple things, and you guys remember back from your playing day, there's really two times a year that as a football player, you really only have to worry about yourself and your development in that spring football fall camp. So to make sure that we don't lose sight, even though I'm new, right? Okay, there's new coaches, there's new systems and things like that. You can't lose sight of the fundamental development for everybody. And like, and I like so specifically, you know, the position you play, what we couldn't do is come in and change all these things so that the fundamental development of key players that are coming back, you know, plateaus because they're busy, you know, trying to process things. So never lose sight of that, right, when you're coming into a spring. But then the second thing, kind of what you, what you were alluding to or talking about a little bit is when you're going in, and I think as long as you as a coach and as long as you as a program have an understanding or a really clear picture of what a player's capabilities are and what their limitations are, you can always figure out something to do that they can be successful. Right. And depending, yeah. you know, on how well, how big of a limitation it is or how big their capabilities are really depends on how big that package can be. But being able to go into spring football, focus on these fundamentals, install things that are new, you know, me learn terminology that they've been learning and, you know, done in the past, but then really be able to spend some time focusing on what they do well. It gives you a really good picture for what fall should look like. Yeah. You know, so you, so you touched on some great points and some things that I've heard you talk about in the past since you got here, and then we obviously chatted at Pro Day a bit, is you seem to be a, fo a major focus of who you are as a coach, how you present, how you talk to the team, is as a teacher. And being around a lot of football coaches in my life, the higher you get up in this, in this ring, ironically, it seems to be less of a focus. And it's something that I've grown to really appreciate of you just hearing and getting to know you in a short period of time. Appreciate that. Where does that come from? Well, it comes from, it comes from probably, and of course, you know, as you, we all age here a little bit, and, I, and I'm in my mid forties now, so I don't, I'm not that old, but old enough to <laughs> have these kind of, <laughs> right, high, you know, hindsight moments. Growing up, small town, playing a bunch of sports like a lot of people do. And I was in, I want to say probably sixth grade. And I grew up playing hockey, so I'm from Minnesota originally, right? So hockey's a huge deal. Yeah. Like, you don't oh, know yeah. how to skate when you're like three or four. <laughs> and so here I am, you know, over five or six, and I know how to skate, and I can skate around the circles and everything. And I'll never forget, and again, this, I didn't know this at the time. I'm sitting there, and I'm helping these little three- and four-year-olds, they call them mites, how to skate. And all I did was demonstrate how I like to do a crossover around a circle. And I, and now again, how many ever years later, I look back at that, and that was like my first exposure ever, like kind of teaching, to your point, yeah. somebody something, even though I wasn't really verbalizing how to do it, more just kind of demonstrating. And I was fortunate enough to, you know, be in high school where, you know, that was small enough that first of all, they let me be on the team, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. But um, I would be coaching like the little kids, you know what I mean? I'd be working little camps. And I went to a college, small college, Division Three, Wisconsin, River Falls. And we'd run summer camps, and this is back when summer camps were real camps. You know, like yeah. today's kids yeah. think the summer camps are just one day. Deal. I mean, I'm talking the old four day. You know, yeah. what I mean, real get Staying better in football. The dorm. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, right. And so, like, I got to do those all across the state of Wisconsin when I was in college, and it just started to hone, like, one, my craft of doing it, but two, really starting to figure out that I really appreciated developing people. Does that make sense? And so. Like seeing it a young, and again, this is all in hindsight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. 20 some years later after college, but you know, cause you're not doing those camps because you're like, oh, I'm really, you know what I mean? I really love teaching, but you just kind of what you did and you just develop a, you know, a knack for it. It's funny you say that. Cause like I, mine, I got into coaching a little bit as I got out and transitioning and I, my grandfather was a head football coach for 30 years. I grew up around it. Like th that concept was awesome, but it almost came more so for me. Like at points in my career, I felt like, I had coaches and teachers and something that you brought up, like kids have something. All kids have something to give, especially at this level. Mm -hmm. And how do you pull that out of them? I've had moments in my career where I had coaches that, I'm not going to say gave up, but it's just they shut down and it frustrated me. And it was almost therapeutic for me to get into that situation and say, hey, I'm now going to pour everything I have into this 16-year-old kid and watch them make strides and how they react. And I think that that's, the business of college football and the business of football in general has gotten in the way. And I think it's so cool when I hear somebody who's getting in this position and now you're dealing with guys who are very, very talented and have gone through that vetting process. But 
it's just something that I really, really appreciate. So. I do appreciate the heck out of you saying that. I, I do that. And, and, yeah. I, and I, I've been fortunate. I've coached every level of college football. You know what I mean? I can honestly say that I never got into this for the for the money or, yeah. or being, you know what I mean, yeah, doing right. interviews and being in a place like this, which is really cool and flattering. But I still really enjoy just watching guys, you know, like here's a new concept that we're going to install, here's how they're going to go, and then they make the mistake, and then we correct it, and then they get it right the next, like that's so rewarding still. And so I, whatever, I rest my head at night knowing yeah. that I'm doing it for the right reasons. Right, that's you fantastic. 